Hello, I'm Mike Muir, and we're wanting to release a new show on our channel, and it's going to be called Truth Bites. It's with me and John. John Flutter is an old friend. I've known John. How long have I known you now? 40 years. Not quite. I was 10, 40 years ago. You might have known Dad 40 years. You've known me probably a little less. Anyway, John's been on a very similar journey. He's come a slightly different route, but basically we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to make people better. John. So what are we talking about tonight, Mike? What is it that we want the people to do? I need people's help, John. So this has come about because you've now been called on three cases before the General Dental Council. Yes. I understand you put a lot of money into that. Okay, I was going to buy a house, John, you know. And, you know, I've had to spend £280,000. Yes. And it's not over yet. It's not over yet. And I, I've never really made money in orthotropics. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm capital down. And you need help with I some need money. a lot of help. Okay. The idea I had before, you know, I didn't have time to do it because of everything else, was I wanted to start a revolution. I wanted to get people together. I wanted to say, look, so many of you have got health problems, you know, from jaw joint problems to sleep apnea to forward head posture and, and of course crooked teeth. And I understand that we need more Patreons. We don't need we? more Patreons, John. Yeah. We do. You yeah. know, because. So if you're what, following us, become a Patreon. You know, I'm very English. I don't like to talk about money. Last thing I want to do is ask people to help or donate money. But money's king, it, it just makes it work. And I want to, we want to start a revolution, John. I shouldn't be here having this court case. And we need your help. Michael yes. needs your help. So the first thing we need to get this movement, to get this change going, is us to come together. Now, if we can come together on the Patreon, you know, yeah. you can charge, we charge you $5 from the bottom, we'll go up to charging quite a lot more at the top. Whatever you want to pay. But if you want to be part of the movement, then could you give us help financially? That would be really kind, because everything costs money i don't expect you to pay all the money i've paid for this court case but we, we all want change and the patrons can become involved they will be involved in the whole process if they yeah. become patrons yes. we'll keep you up to date and welcome your feedback and help and support in every way yeah. so tell us about the technical support you're looking for i understand that your actual patreon administration is an area where you need assistance yeah so the f first thing so we, we would love to get some people to help and one of the first things we would like is some people in communications and the first communication role we really need is someone to help us get the most out of our patreon some people to help organize the things that we're going to need to do because I don't know how to start a movement. Yeah. I don't know how to do this, John. I've never done this before in my yeah, life. Right. You're an orthodontist. You've got a practice. Yes. You've got a young family. You've got Crohn's disease, which is flaring <laughs> up. But apart from that, everything's coming. And you've got a court case to deal with and in got, nine weeks. And I've got dad stamping his thing. It's down yes. that he's going to die soon if we yeah. don't get this over the line. Yes. And you know, if I lose this, you know, he loses everything he's done. Yes. You know, this is what's taken two generations of our family to get here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we lose this court case, and this is no done thing. No. You know, they, they say, John, don't go in to trial if you don't have an expert witness you know, from one of the, the team, you know, from the normal standard group of expert witnesses. If you have to rely on someone from outside the country, you're at a massive disadvantage. Yes. You've got to rely on people who aren't like routine experts who do that job. And my understanding is that there's no orthodontist of good standing in the academic community who's willing to support your stand. Is that correct? As an expert, no. And an expert, no. No, there's no one. There's literally, I cannot find anyone for any level of expertise who will support me. We've, 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 thought, we've thought, we've thought, we've racked our brains on anyone in the UK that holds any weight who would support me. And there's not no one. one. No one. No so one. So what would the international experience be? If you were allowed to have international experience? But, but, John, you would have realised how bad that looks when you stand up in court. I understand that looks very bad, Mike, when you stand up in court. But I wanted to contrast that with the support that you have from overseas. Tell us about the support you've had from overseas. Okay. 
So the support, we, we, the, 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 this is a whole, we're part of a huge movement. You know, it, it ranges from My Brace to um, Wilma Samoas in South America to Planus to Frankel to all the guys doing oh, Ifuna. Um, Ifuna. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's hundreds of groups in hundreds of places, all the functional appliance guys, um, My Functional Therapy. Um, all is the it, sleep breathing disorder. Yeah, well, you know, th- th- there's a huge TMJ. community, but you know, this is the, the, these are the type of early people. Okay, these aren't you know these are the guys that are willing to stick their neck out. They're not the type of research people, and because they've not done research yet, because this is a relatively new area, then I don't have that objective evidence. Where's that objective evidence? As I say, I'll sort of settle down going through my witness statements. You keep getting statements. What's the objective evidence for this? And what do they mean by objective evidence? They want exactly? something. In the, they want me to be able to take a quote out of a paper that says that statement. And this paper must be in a particular type of journal. Tell us about that. Those referee journals. Ah, they're refereed by the peers. Yeah. So if you don't get past the referees because the peers don't agree with it, yeah. then you don't get to publish. Do you know how long it's taken Dad to publish some things? So it's, it's like it 10, 20 years for some things. So it's like the referees marking their own homework. Well, it's the referees stopping new questions coming into the syllabus. Mm-hmm. There are stopping questions being asked. That's a simple thing. Questions are not being answered. There are questions to ask. But if you have... You, even in a new area, by definition, you don't have that objective evidence. So by definition, I'm guilty. But these questions will be asked in court. Oh, yes. And then we will get answers. Yes, we will ask them. They, they, this is going to be very illuminating. It will because be we, very, yeah, very because illuminating. Because they will be asked to justify their position in court. Yeah, yeah, on reference. Mm-hmm. And that will be cross-examined, mm-hmm. and that will be weighed and balanced by mm-hmm. two um, QCs. They're not QCs anymore, you know, John. They're KCs, aren't they? They're KCs, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told me Long live the king. <laughs> Long live the king. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm in a sticky situation. And one of my biggest frustrations in all of this is the fact that I spent five years, I think, writing to the great and good in orthodontics simply saying what we need to debate on why teeth are crooked. I wrote to everyone. The um, British Orthodontic Society, they didn't have to be. In fact, they didn't even debate it when I said that was my defence when they threw me out. Right. That's what I find a bit shocking. So the when they had the allegations, that there was originally 10 allegations, it'd been boiled down to two that are very different from what they originally said. But I said... To defend these allegations, you need to have a debate on the etiology with me. You know, it's part of my defence. You have to see what I said in context, which is one of my arguments in this whole case. So I, by etiology, what you mean is what causes course, the yeah, problem? Course. Yeah, I'm simply saying, if you don't know the cause of the problem, you don't know the problem. And I wrote to the GDC, four separate heads. I wrote to the British Orthodontic Society, endless mail, and, you know, emails and letters, but mainly emails. Then the, I asked, even had a question asked by someone else in the House of Lords. Right. We wrote to the All-Party Dental Committee. I wrote to the, the, the committee above the General Dental C- Council. Um, the, basically, I wrote to everyone, absolutely everyone, I, and several questions in the British Dental Journal, just saying this out clear. You, know, you, you can Google those ones. And <clears throat> I got a stack of letter paper, a lot of it on government paper, and people just passed the buck. I'm simply saying, we're treating a third, it's probably a half, if not more, John, of the kids of this country, with what is actually quite, it's quite deep intervention. The profession expensive intervention. and expensive intervention that needs retainers for the rest of your life. Something you need to do for the rest of your life. Um, and we open it with my profession, my speciality openly admits it doesn't know the cause of the problem. So can we just go briefly into where these two camps, you say that there's no orthodontic specialist that will be an expert that would support you. Yeah. And, and apparently the, that's very dangerous. What is the uh, fundamental difference between what you're saying and what they're saying? Let's elaborate on that a bit. Whether it's genetic or the environment. Just elaborate on that. So what they're saying, if it's genetic, then that is just an unfortunate genetic outcome. Yeah. 
They're saying, because what, what I'm doing with these cases is trying to change facial form. That's what I'm trying to do. That was the objective. And they're saying that's impossible. That, so, that's, the, that's the crunch of it. So they're saying that if there's a malocclusion, that's a, an unfortunate genetic accident. And you're saying, when you're saying an environment, just elaborate on that. What do you think in the environment? So we've gone, you know, from this having this massively tough diet where we had huge, great big jaws. You know, I've got a big jaw. I've got strong jaw muscles. How do you get strong jaw muscles? You chew and that strong jaw has got enough space for my teeth in it. You know, that's how we were supposed to grow with, with eating tough things. Our ancestors ate tough things. Look at those pictures of people from tribal communities. Nice broad faces, nice broad smiles, yeah. don't see much malocclusion. And we know our ancestors didn't have malocclusion. It's there. We've got the fossil records. It's so but we're, we're, we're talking about the uh, environment. You said that either it's genetic or environmental. Yeah, environmental. We're just trying to get you to talk about what you think the environmental factors are. Yeah, the two- when people think about the environment, they think about reduced rainforests and glaciers. Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we, the, t- the two big changes we think is because we've gone from this really tough rough hard diet through to this real soft diet that's reduced our muscle strength use it or lose it wolf's law you've got smaller jaws and the other thing is we're getting blocked noses now if you get a blocked nose you have to breathe through your mouth that changes your posture you've got weak jaws weak muscles you're hanging your mouth open the face gets longer so tell us, when we talk about posture, I imagine that's how people are standing up. You're talking about posture in a different context here. Tell us about what you mean by posture here. I'm talking about posture of your mouth and your tongue. If your tongue's supposed to be on the roof of the mouth, developing the midface. And your lips supposed to be what? Lips close. Teeth together, the lips together, the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Lips and only way. put your teeth together if you've got the tongue on the roof of the mouth, because otherwise that causes problems. And if you do that, you have to breathe through... Your nose. Your nose. Got to. So, and it encourages, I think it encourages you to stand up straight. So when what you're saying is, is that there's this fundamental difference that either it's an unfortunate genetic accident or as a result of the environment, and now we're talking specifically about the tongue position mm. and the lip position, while the child is growing, that will influence growth and development. And what you're saying is that you can influence that process by... Yes, so fundamentally. Fundamentally And that we need that to process. be doing, and we need to be doing this as a prevention strategy, because I really think... That this is the, 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 the big crux, and what really annoys me here is that I feel, and you feel as well, and a lot of people do, that simple public health measures could... Cheap public health measures could dramatically reduce the levels of not just malocclusion, but all of this, this host of problems with the head... Yes, this thing here seems to have these ENT problems. It's got these malocclusions. It's got these breathing issues. It's got these ear, nose and throat problems. And we've got forward head postures. Something's going wrong, John. But again, there'd be no expert that would support anything you just said, no. I understand. No, no, no. And they, they, they'd, they'd be, make, yes, so exactly. They'd make no connection between this poor cranial growth and those <sighs> other issues you mentioned, like the breathing and the snoring mm. and the TMJ. Mm. No one's going to support me on all of us. No. no there's no one there. Yeah. I can't, I mean, how do I get that information into this course? Yes. How, how do I convey, or, you know, these big groups of people who would agree with me? You know, they're not interested in their opinion. Because I go into that core, I'm in the lion's den. And so what they're talking about, this empirical research that's needed, mm. is essentially things like double-blind trials. They, they, they would, yeah, that would be lovely, but it's just something. You know, but, but, I've been pestering for five, six years. I've been in a constant, almost, argument with the, the, the professor at the local university to me. I'm in his catchment, well within the catchment area, just trying to start some research. Just trying to get research, trying to get the various research done that they say I don't have because I don't have... This is crazy, John. So they demand research but prevent you from being able to do it or don't give you any support well, in doing it. Who's paying their salaries? It's all the out public. of the public purse. It's all out of the public purse. There's my taxes there. Mm-hmm. My taxes and my patients' taxes and your taxes. Mm-hmm. Don't forget that. Let's just wrap it up. John, thank you very much for helping me get to the microphone. Well, I'd like to do everything I can to help, and we'd like other people to help as well. Yeah. Just to say again, we'd like you to support Patreon. I'm going to make one comment before we wrap up. I really struggle to get out from under the duvet in the morning, John. And one of the hardest things it is, I find, is to ask a favour of someone. 
right. you know how incredibly hard it is for me to pick the phone up right Put it to my ear and ask a favour. I pass right. all of those points. When you read right. the things about being depressed, I, I tick those boxes right. literally years ago. Right. The only thing that keeps me going yeah. is this passion to get this in. Otherwise, I should be depressed point all the way along. And well, I probably let, am. Let's see how much help and support we can get you. Uh, if they can give us some technical assistance in getting Patreon moving forwards. That would be wonderful. Those two you know? Yeah, just help me out here. Let's wrap it up yeah, there. Help me out. Good night. No, no.